What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king. Welcome back to more Let's Play Subnautica. In the last episode, we made it here to the mountain island. We found this crazy alien facility and realized that things run a whole lot deeper than we thought. We also had... So why is my the name on my prawn suit hanging above the prawn suit? Probably needs to stand up to, like, catch up to it again. This is a weird glitch. Anyway, yeah, okay, well, that's a that's strange. Anyways, uh, we also were waiting for the sunbeam to arrive, and, uh, well, let's just say things didn't go so well for the sunbeam. But I have taken the liberty of stocking up everything in my inventory and my storage with all of the lithium, gold, and diamonds that I was planning on getting here. And now we can leave! Now we are just going back to the surviving thing, and... Hopefully, we're going to figure out more about what's going on. Now, we did learn that there are some other alien facilities that we can go after. And we will in due time, don't you worry. But uh, for now, we're going to head back. And I am going to hopefully... Um, okay, Bone Shark spawning right next to me. I don't like that. Uh, I'm going. To, we're going to hopefully start working on diving a little bit deeper. There is another radio broadcast waiting for us once we get there. So we'll be able to listen to that. But unfortunately, the sunbeam is a goner, and everybody on board is probably dead. I don't think it's going to be one a life pod situation, unless, I don't know, maybe we hear a distress signal from one of them or something like that, but it was a much smaller ship than the Aurora, so it didn't have a chance of faring as well as even the Aurora did. So yeah, Aurora got shot down by big alien gun, because entire planet is a no-no zone. That is evidently the uh, the reason that all of this has happened. It's also why we can't leave, because if we try to leave, the alien gun will just kill us again. So, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, shoot. Let's get out of here. So, we're almost there. We'll be able to drop off all of the stuff that I collected, which is a ton. Like, a, just a crap ton. Let's not go flying into our sea moth as we do this, because that will damage it quite a bit. And uh, I do need to get myself some more food and waters, which our water generating machine probably did make all of the water that I need, and yes, it did. Okay, good. So I'll pick up more of that in a second, but actually, what would probably be a good idea is if I just drink some of this water in the meantime. Let me, let me quickly dump all this stuff in. So we got our gold. Probably going to fill up that locker. We're definitely going to fill up this one. There's a reason I made two lithium lockers it's for this specific reason. Let's go out here and empty this storage as well. Got ion cubes and tablets and all sorts of stuff. Okay. So many things. I'm gonna have to, you know what? I'm actually going to generate another set of lockers. And actually, I've only got enough titanium on me to make one. But let's do that, and we'll name this one Alien, for just alien stuff, I suppose. There we go. But uh, let's dump all the rest of this real quick. So, didn't quite fill it up as much as I thought we were going to, but we certainly filled up the lithium ones. Enough lithium probably to last us close to or at the end of the game. Which is awesome. There's our gold. Now let's grab all of this stuff really quickly. Our ion cubes and tablets that I was able to grab. So I got quite a few of those. Well, quite a few, as in three, but that's still really nice. And then I got three purple tablets and an orange tablet, which is also pretty awesome. Okay, so let me go through here really quickly. Um, actually, do I want to mess with any of this? No, I guess I don't. I need, I need to... I'll, I'll make do with all that later. We'll worry about that at another time. Let me... I think I have a battery I need to swap out, though. So let's do that. And let's take a look at our new radio broadcast. This is Life Pod 2 coordinates attached. We're way past our safe depth and bleeding O2. We'll have to swim for the surface, but it's 500 meters straight up. We'll make for the rendezvous and keep you posted. Out. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Okay, so this location, this location that we have just been given, this is probably the most important life pod in the entire game, and it's right there, 500 or 1543 meters away, 500 meters deep. 
I can't wait to show you guys this location because some stuff is going to be going on here. But first things first, uh, let me let me cook actually these uh, Reginalds real quick and we'll eat up. And then we will also drink some water before I go and grab some out of our water filtration machine. Okay, that was probably overkill. I probably only needed to cook one of those. That was silly. Um, let me, here, take that. So this can start generating more. There we go. And then we'll just drink our disinfected water. Perfect. Okay, so. This is going to be on the docket for today. Can't wait to do this. So we're going to head towards this next location, which is 1,500, yeah, 1,500 meters away from here, which we shouldn't have too much trouble getting to in time. So let's do that. Although, hold on, I'm looking at my power here. You know what? Actually, I probably should do that first. Um, not just charge this thing. I probably need to make more uh, power cells. It's always a good idea to keep extra power cells on hand on your suit, just in case you start to run into some issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. Um, let's head on in here. I have the copper for it, so I'm going to make... I'll make like... Yeah, let's make like... Uh, four power cells. And I've only got the two acid mushrooms, so I will go and grab... So what is that? Uh, 14 more. So one, two, three, four. Make a lot of these. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, we're gonna make a bunch of batteries out of this. I do need to make more silicone rubber as well. So let's do that. Just slowly but surely build it all up. And also the power is going down because it is charging my prawn suit. But that's okay. I'm not super worried in that regard. Because our bioreactor lasts for... Not literally forever, but it might as well. Like, I might need to replenish it once before the end of the game. It just lasts that long. Alright, so there's all that. Now, how much silicone do I actually have? Um... I have four. Okay, perfect. So we'll be able to make four uh, power cells out of that, which is great. Exactly what I needed. I will have to get more silicone rubber in the future, though. So I think I'm going to take these power cells, and I know I need a power cell charger too, but the moon pool is kind of already acting as that, so it's not a huge deal. I'm going to put one of these power cells in my Seamoth. I'm going to put two of these in my storage container for my prawn suit. And my last one, I think I'm just going to keep as a spare in my battery locker. And we should be good otherwise. All right. Yeah, there we go. I can also pull all of these out in the meantime and stuff them away too. Okay, cool. So that should be everything I need. I've got the water I need. I've got a nutrient block. I think I'm going to be fine. How are you on your energy? It's got to be dang close, if not all the way. This thing charges super fast. Fully charged. Okay, cool. Let's go. So, where are we heading? We are heading. It's north. This way. Okay, so this area we're heading into next is the blood kelp zone. And you might be saying, well, we were already in the blood kelp zone uh, a couple times. Uh, no, because this is a different blood kelp zone. That was the blood kelp trench. This is the actual proper zone. And this area is, well, let's just say it's one of the worst, or worst, one of the scariest areas in the game due to the nature of what you'll find in there. It's kind of the Grand Reef on steroids. Okay, maybe that's not quite uh, correct to say. It's definitely not the Grand Reef on steroids because the Grand Reef has the big... Uh, ghost leviathans and two of them at that while the blood kelp zone only has one baby uh, ghost leviathan which is still bad and still scary but uh what really makes the blood kelp zone kind of terrifying is the amount of uh the crab squids and the warpers but also the fact that it's got ampules on top of that it's also just kind of an uh, oh yeah it also has cave crawlers too which are like bigger cave crawlers which can also be really annoying and jump on you it's just got a whole lot of things in there that want to hurt you 
and it also goes a lot deeper than any of the zones we've been to thus far. So we're going to go right here past the mushroom forest. Just kind of follow the path this way. Past the bone sharks. And over we go. Okay. This is the blood kelp trench. Right? Or are we closer to the end? No, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's kind of on the outskirts of the underwater islands, but down we go. So there's a crab squid. Watch out for those. Those will power off your prawn suit. But they're not the worst things in the world. Honestly, probably the, the least threatening things you'll find in here. But it's not actually the blood kelp zone itself that I am most interested in as we go further and further down here. What's up, dude? Oh, he is right next to that life pod. Okay, is he going to do the thing? Nope, not quite. Okay, so here it is. There is baddies around here. We are going to make our way into the life pod really quickly and grab ourselves a PDA. Integrating new PDA data. Flotation devices failed. We're flooding. Evacuate. Wait. I can reconfigure the O2 system to act as a bilge pump. <laughs> It's working. Okay, good news. We're alive and we've stopped sinking. Bad? The oxygen's going to run out in 30 minutes and we're 500 meters down. What do we do? We'll have to use the remaining juice to send a distress call and build whatever gear we can. Then we find a way to the surface. We do know that CTOU did make it to the surface because she was the only one who rendezvoused with Officer Keen over on the floating island. But I don't think things went so well for that Berkeley fella. But this is not the main reason that we're here. Oh no. Like this life pod is incredibly important because it is a wonderful marker for probably the most important area in the game. And also these right here. We do want these. In fact, I am going to try to grab some uh, safely. Let's grab a couple of these. These are deep shrooms. These are necessary for some components that we're going to be making a little bit later. I'm going to grab a couple of these. I actually can scan them without taking any hits, please, by anything that's out here. So we'll do that. Okay. Is that enough? That's probably enough. Okay. So yeah, that is use useful for something we're going to be making a little bit later, particularly acid, um, which is necessary for certain components. But as we head further down, things get a little bit crazier over this way because we're about to leave the blood kelp zone and venture into an entirely new biome this is probably the coolest biome in the entire game and i can't wait to show it to you leading to a biome with extensive fossilized remains almost there this is known as the lost river everybody and this is where we're going to be spending the most of the rest of the game trying to get everything that we need to beat this game and hopefully go even deeper. The Lost River is an incredibly important place. Those right there are known as River Prowlers. They suck, they hurt, but they're not the worst thing in this area. The worst thing in this area is a big ghosty leviathan that is floating above and around somewhere. But I also have nickel ore here, so I'm going to try to drill some of that up. I am particularly looking for nickel ore and crystalline sulfur, both of which can be found in this area. Now, nickel ore is only found in drilling deposits. Um, in this particular part of the Lost River, there's a deeper part of the Lost River where you can actually just straight up grab nickel ore. Um, but crystalline sulfur can be found in the brine down there, that green brine that you see that's all glowing. The only problem with the brine... I see the Leviathan over there. The only problem with the brine is that the brine hurts you when you are when you swim in it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the prawn suit to make your way through the brine, brine and grab it. So you have to be a little bit careful about how you handle this. So I got some nickel. I would like to mine at least one more of those deposits. Okay, that is the crystalline sulfur right there. Now you technically can, if you're very, very careful, get out and grab it like that without taking any damage. But another way of dealing with this 
is to just remove the drill arm like so ow and I can get out and punch this thing for doing that to me you piece of crap and uh, now we can head on over here and just kind of wade through this and grab some of this crystalline sulfur like so which is a little bit safer in my opinion because then I also don't have to worry about something like that ambushing me it was annoying we want this crystalline sulfur because it is necessary for our jump jet upgrade. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try to grab at least eight of these um, before we leave. You don't need a whole lot of crystalline sulfur to complete the game. Is that, that's more silver ore. Okay, don't need that. There are so many mining deposits in this area. It's ridiculous. This whole area goes a lot deeper, but we're gonna stick to this upper area for the time being. Just for now. While I grab this stuff. Okay. So we got four already. Let's see if we can get four more, and then I think we should be good. You really don't need a lot of this stuff to beat the entire game. Once you start getting into these deeper areas, these components become less need. Like, they become super valuable, certainly, but they're also not like a must have a thousand of them like you would with older components that we've been collecting all this time. Okay. That's six. Nope, nope, six, there we go. Okay, we're doing good, there's lithium. Is there more crystalline sulfur? Yes, there is. Seven. Got more lithium, silver ore. I'm gonna look for an opportunity to make a change here in a minute. As soon as I grab the last crystalline sulfur, wherever it is. I really have to scan these brine pools very carefully. Oh, here we go. Okay, and it looks like there's another one right there, so I'll just grab that for good measure. If I can, really have to, like, stay focused on it. Okay, perfectly. Okay, so this is a drop-off, and it goes down a whole lot deeper. I would have confidence going down there if I had w at least one depth module on this prawn suit, but at the moment, I do not, because while it doesn't, it's not, like, all the way 900 meters, if that makes sense, it's there's, it's really, you can't really walk around down there at above 900 meters, which is what is dangerous to the prawn suit, because at crush depths, this thing still dies basically as quickly as the sea moth does, and it also can't get itself out of situations as quickly as the sea moth does, so yeah, just don't, don't bother with it, we're gonna work on getting the first depth module before we go any deeper, okay, is that, those are just, is that a shale? I think that's just shale, okay gonna continue to keep an eye out because I really want myself some nickel ore not silver just nickel is this it that's nickel right there okay I'm gonna dr turn around while I drill this thing because there is a ghosty leviathan get out of here go away you stupid thing there is a ghosty leviathan playing around in here and it's a baby so it's not as big and it's not as noticeable as that one in the Grand Reef was I haven't really come across juveniles as much so I don't think we've come across any actually so I, won't, I haven't been able to show how small they are we did catch the tail end of it if you were paying attention as we wandered in here but it just kind of floats around the entire space once I have all the nickel I need we should be good to get the heck on out of here and back to our base. And uh, we are going to basically just kind of use this as a re-entry point the more we start to get ourselves upgrades. Okay, there's more nickel ore here. So I'm going to drill this and I think we'll be good to go. Holy crap. I actually love this area. Once you start getting into the deeper areas of the game, I mean, I just... This is the part of the game that it just I adore so much. Like, I love everything else, too, don't get me wrong. But once you start, like, you get that feeling where you start to conquer the later areas. It's so great. And just how cool some of these areas are in terms of design and the stuff you run into. It's just, oh, it's so awesome. Subnautica at its finest. I say as I slowly drill this nickel ore deposit for like a minute straight before it finally all breaks down definitely like the worst part okay let's get out of here now that we have what we need there's another one right there should i need more 
But I think I'm good. Okay. Where is Ghosty Boy? He's around here somewhere. I think he's more in the upper area. There he is. Yep, I can see him. Hanging out way over there. Okay, let's move. Thank you. There he is. He's just a baby, so he's not as big, but he's still he's still aggressive and he still will attack you. What's up, dude? Oh, he sees me. Time to get a move on. Hello there. Okay, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. And then we grapple again. Go, go, go. Oh, he's still chasing me. Hello there. Just worry about the river prowlers. Don't worry about me right now. Don't worry about me. Okay, he's left me alone. Yeah, you don't really have a whole lot to worry about so long as you're careful. And again, you have the prawn suit with you. But, uh, here we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So, this is always going to be my preferred point of entry into the Lost River, is this area of the Blood Kelp Zone. I know that some people have their other favorites. There's actually a location that's right next to the Bulb Zone that a lot of people prefer. I do not. I have traversed it. It is not my favorite. And uh, despite the fact that that Ghosty Boy is there, there, it's just so much easier to maneuver around in there, and it's really not that hard to dodge the Ghosty Boy either. So, and yes, I am going to continue to refer to him as Ghosty Boy as we uh, play this game because it's a good name. Okay, don't, don't, don't question it. It up! I really messed up my grapple there. Ugh, I really need that jump jet upgrade, but that's okay. We have the crystalline sulfur now, so we should be fine. Okay, I know there's a ghost leviathan floating around here somewhere, but I can't remember exactly where he's positioned at. And I think it's actually an adult one too, not a not a baby. So, just continue on over this way. The music in the Blood Kelp Zone is just like the best too, regardless of which track it is that's playing. Whether it's those sick beats or that that crazy vocalized music with the lady Oh my gosh. Okay, up we go. Ah! Okay, in a real pinch, should you ever get into the situation, it's actually... Also, I love how I just pushed that bone shark. Alright, quit taking bites out of me. We are... I think we're actually in the underwater islands now. We're not in the blood kelp zone anymore. Um, yes, we are. Oh, what was I saying? Um, I completely am spacing. What the heck? Ah, what was I saying? <laughs> Shoot. Uh, yeah, screw it. You know what? It doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't even matter. I completely lost that train of thought. That doesn't usually happen. Like where I just completely forget what I'm talking about. But what are you going to do? Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. Uh, in a pinch, if you ever need to and you're running and you're about to fall to your doom, you can always use the grapple hook to kind of hold yourself in place for a while. And unless you do that and let go like a dummy, like I just did, you can all use it for a while to hold yourself in place while your jump uh, jet slowly replenishes, which is kind of nice. But I am taking way too many hits. And also, I need to replenish my food. And water, mostly my water, so let's do that. Okay, let's go up. We'll use that momentum to climb, keep climbing. Okay, I lost all my momentum, that's just great. Let's just hold that. Okay, just stay right there. I really need this upgrade, it's driving me nuts. Because you can propel yourself so much higher with it, it's kind of insane. There we go. A little better. Eh, eh, eh. Got it. Okay. Finally. My gosh. All right. Let's get back to our base. We're going to start working on all of these upgrades for the prawn suit. And then we can start delving a whole lot deeper. Get our next module. I think we can also get maybe, oh, I don't know, possibly a thermal energy module as well to go with it. That's That one might not happen, but we'll see. Let's head on down. There we go. 
I do need to grab more of those seed clusters because I got to make more silicone. At least silicone is like the easiest thing in the world to make because you get two for every seed cluster you grab. There we go. Oh, we're landing right on the coral tube. Oof. That stopped me. All right. Now swing again. And then once we get that upgrade, we are going to be able to go so much higher. Oh no, not another crash fish. I'm so scared of them now. Really not. Alright, let's I'm gonna dock this thing in the moon pool just for the sake of my energy. Especially since we're all full on power again, which that's always nice. Let's head down and I I'm gonna also play that new thing in a bit. The new radio transmission, but let's make some food. I think we are, I think that might have honestly been the last life pod in the game, if I'm being honest. Okay, let's do that. Um, oh, that's right. Okay, so if we look at our advanced materials, you'll see that we can make polyaniline, which requires gold and hydrochloric acid, as well as hydrochloric acid itself, which we need salt deposits and shrooms to do. Um, if I can, well, let me, I, I can just check my blueprints. Um... Let's see, so for the jump jet upgrade, we have what we need. The crystalline sulfur, nickel ore, we just need the titanium and lithium. We do need polyaniline for the thermal reactor, but we unfortunately don't have kyanite, so we can't do anything with that. All we need is a play steel ingot and two rubies for this, but we can use the polyaniline, I guess, for the perimeter defense system, but eh, I'm not going to worry about that. I think I'm just going to dump all of these in my shrooms uh, locker for the time being. And let's get as much titanium as we can out. Like all the titaniums. Oh gosh, we might be cutting it a little bit close. And then I'm going to make myself one titanium ingot. Which we will also eventually turn into a playsteel ingot. Just need to go get some lithium really quickly. And then hopefully the rest of the titanium is enough that we are good to go. Okay, so let's see. Let me let me go over that again really quickly. So we got... Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Place it? Yeah, okay, we need two rubies and one more lithium, and then we'll be fine. Which I know I have enough rubies, and I definitely have enough lithium, as we literally just saw. So let's go and craft these upgrades here, and that is going to be a fully stocked prawn suit, if I'm not mistaken. Jump jet upgrade, and no, we cannot upgrade our... Oh, I gotta get two more nickel ore. Hold on. Let me get that out of my storage really quickly. I know there's plenty in here. Um, what, was I, what was I saying? Yeah, we can't upgrade the depth module yet because we need kyanite, which we still do not have to do so. But don't worry, this is going to allow our prawn suit to go as deep as 1,300 meters now. So let's equip that and that. Yep, 1,300 meters. That is a huge difference maker and is going to allow us to go even further into the Lost River. All right, let's play this radio message. Playing partially translated broadcast. Destroyed. Moon. Patrol. New targets unaccounted for. One. Well, that's terrifying. Okay, so those things are definitely still whatever they are. Making crazy broadcasts that I don't like. Um, I'm gonna put, let's put. We're gonna put some more things in here. So I'm gonna put nickel in this one. Perfect. Um, I also need to put all of my sulfur away. Haha, it's a double purpose sulfur spot. And uh, what else do I have that I'm, I was gonna put away? I guess we can make this one the kyanite one. Because there's a good chance that I'm gonna be going and collecting that really soon. Uh, there was, I guess, I guess I could call this the toy locker. That would probably be the last thing. Put all that stuff in there. And I will move all of that. No, get me out of there. Move all of that around from my equipment locker here. I really don't like those fishies that keep coming up through there. But let's, well, I guess I can keep these in there. But we'll take out this prawn suit poster. And we'll take out all of this stuff, as well as this stuff here. 
Okay, good. I'll uh, put that away, because why not? Just kind of adding to everything. Put all the toys away. Like so. And we have beacons and benzene, which I need to do stuff with too. But I am officially out of titanium now. Holy crap. This is bad. My goodness. And how are we on time? Uh, yeah, I think we're probably going to end up calling this an episode. Just... Enough, man. I, made a, I got a lot of nickel ore. Okay, next episode, guys, we are going to be venturing either, even further into the Lost River. Um, there's a whole lot more for us to grab and find down there, and that we are going to be doing with just our prawn suit. However, I do want to mention, because we are very much on the cusp of that point, uh, the Cyclops. I want to talk about that. Well, I'm going to talk about it more in the next episode, but it, I just want to mention really briefly that... The Cyclops is something that I am not going to put a whole lot of emphasis on in this playthrough because if I'm being completely honest, it is not something I would even advise doing. That being said, the Cyclops itself is a really cool concept, so I would like to actually talk about it, and we will talk about it, but just know that right now I do not have a whole lot of plans of like spending a lot of time on the Cyclops, and we're going to actually take out the alien feces and sticking that in there because that is great for the bioreactor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Let's Play Subnautica. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.